Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We got our guest host, Claudia Jordan, with us today. And we got some special guests in the building. We have Kirk and Tammy Franklin. Welcome, guys. Thank y'all. Uh, it's my first time, y'all. Yeah, first yeah. time here. Yeah. yeah. Nice to meet you. Yeah, nice gentle. to meet you. Thank you. We got you. Thank you. <laughs> this is my <laughs> second time talking to y'all this yes, week. Yes, right? right? Yeah. So you guys have a new show, The One. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm so excited for Wifey Man. She, uh, she and I are going to be hosting this uh this uh, really kind of cool day. It's not a Christian dating show. Mm-hmm. It's just a really just good dope dating show for people just, you know, trying to find the journey and the process. Very proud of my girl, man. I'm really excited that she's getting a chance to, you know, shine her light with empty nesters now. And so I'm really wanting her to kind of just get some love and people to see how incredibly dope she is, charismatic, beautiful she is. And and I'm really trying to just kind of, you know what I'm saying, kind of push out there. Oh, I and like this. So, I like this. So for yeah. people that don't know, how did y'all meet? How did how did y'all how did he steal your heart, or did he not steal your heart? Or like how did y'all meet? Y'all been together for a long time. We have twenty seven years. We've been wow. married, and um, our story is is long. So I have to give you the condensed version. But we got we, time. We first met when we were eighteen years old. We were in a water amusement park, so you know I had on a swimsuit, you know, looking cute, mm-hmm. and actually it, I, it, it was a two piece. It was a two piece. It, was, yeah. it, it wasn't a bikini. It wasn't a swimsuit. Okay. <laughs> I had, you know, red lip, had a Chardé going. Mm -hmm. And so I was on the outside of the Water Music Park. Actually, um, somebody I was sort of kind of seeing at the time, we got into a little scuffle. And so I went outside just to kind of take a breather. A scuffle or argument? All right. Well, you know, just a, we didn't didn't tussle. We didn't fight. He was getting on your nerves. He didn't put no hands on me. He got on your nerves. Yeah, he was getting on my nerves. And so, and it was getting ready to close. And so, you know how they used to do those, like, um, out, out of school summer jams. It was kind of like mm-hmm. like that. Okay. And so I'm outside. Uh, I have my towel wrapped around me, and these guys come and take it from me. And so then all of a sudden, this guy comes with cross colors on, fully dressed. Everybody else got on swimsuits, <laughs> fully dressed. And he had the guys give me give the towel back to me, and I was like, oh, thank you. So then one of the guys was like, you the one told us to take it from her because you wanted to meet her. Wait a minute, oh, Mr. Kirk Franks. So wait a minute, so so so, this, so Mr. So Kirk Franks. Like, he told him he's take the game. towel, yes, and he then he got him. it back for you, so he looked like the savior. Yes. So you set up a fake incident to look like the hero. I just want to say that I'm, I'm very <laughs> glad to be back at the breakfast club <laughs> oh, this wow. morning. And, and but it I made me laugh. Like, That's plenty. Of, kind of, I ain't gonna it lie. because I was in a bad mood. That's flattering though. That is kind of cute. I was like, he did all this. I mean, he lied, but it's cute though. Me, okay. But it was cute. And I'm looking how he's looking at you. He looking at you like you got that towel off still. He sure does. Like don't any look at him like that. He's like visualizing that towel being. Off. <laughs> oh. And what did you think when you first saw when you had the cross colors in the, in the summer and everybody's wet bathing suits and yeah, you yeah, sweating yeah. and you hot? Well, she got to tell you why I had it on. She tell you in a minute, but I'm you know I'm 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 18 year old boy, you mm-hmm. know, and and Tammy's like mad fine, you know what I'm saying, you know, and you know she's 53 now and look how beautiful she looks, you she's know what I'm gorgeous. saying, you know, mm-hmm. and you know for me, I, I mean, I wasn't trying to look at her soul or her spirit, and I didn't know if she could read the Bible or not. not I, I didn't care, time. you know, I'm, you know, was I'm, you into church like that as much at that well, time? That, I mean, honestly, I asked him, I said, why are you fully clothed? And he said to me, I just came from choir rehearsal. I'm a minister of music. I was a little church girl too, so mm-hmm. it just. You know, at first I was like, oh, at first I'm thinking, oh, I can make old boy inside jealous when he comes out. But then the honesty just, it took me aback. And I was like, oh, I think I'm really interested. I love the and complexity. You know that, I'm, I'm, I'm right? sorry, please, please, please. I was going to say, I love the complexity of the church guy staging right? a towel being ripped off <laughs> yeah. because he's into church in the Bible. But then, like, he has the background. But well, you know, and I was into honest. a lot of things, though. But, you know, kind of like we talked about, you know, as I had this difficult kind of duality mm-hmm. where, you know, I was in church, but I was also, you know, on the on the block and, you know, mm-hmm. doing what, you know what I'm saying, young boys do all the wrong things, all the, you know, the ignorant things, but, you know, was trying to be right. So, you know, you're always living with that Jekyll and Hyde, you know, yeah. kind of thing. But, and, and we still do it now. So, you know, I was... I was I was just trying to find my way, and then you know, um, you know, it's always a good woman that kind of helps give you that uh, that that special push. You know? it's Absolutely, a, it's a happy ending, so that's all that kind of matters. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So why why this dating show? Like, and why is this different than any other? Because there's so many out there. What I love particularly, what I loved about this show when um, it was brought to us is you have a bachelor and a bachelorette. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have a cast that's that's black. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then the bachelor and bachelorette are more seasoned. They're older. And so they've lived life. They're truly ready to find the one. Where typically reality shows, and especially when it's dating uh, focused, it they're younger. Mm-hmm. And so 
you know, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're not ready. But when you're seasoned and you like our, our bachelorette, uh, Ashley is a chemist. Uh, she already owns her own home. Uh, you know, Brent is very accomplished. He's in real estate. And mm-hmm. so they've lived enough life where they're ready to find the one and then to come alongside with this guy right here and to coach them on a journey. We are not experts whatsoever, but we, you know, experience is a good teacher, as they say, and we've learned enough and done enough to where we can come alongside and coach. I beg to differ. Direct them. I, I hate when people say, you know, to be an expert, you have to go to school for something or you have to read books. But you guys just told us you've been married for what, 27, 27. years, 20 years? But you I guys think are experts. Well, 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 and the reason why she said it like that, King, is that because I think that, that, that within the culture, when you start seeing couples, I think that we begin to super romanticize and idolize relationships, that we put pressures on people that we think that their lives are perfect. And mm-hmm. so we try to aspire to what we think that perfection is. And so we like to deconstruct that to let people know that just because you got time, man, don't mean that you've got quality in. That, that is true. But yes. if I was having a problem with my wife, I would call you guys before mm. I would call somebody that's actually read up on and went to school. And the reason being is, which is my next question, you guys have been through the ups and downs. And sometimes it's not what you face, it's how you get out of it, mm-hmm. right? The resolve. The resolve. Yes, absolutely. So I was gonna ask you, what was the hardest thing in your relationship over these 27 years that you had to get through that was very, very difficult? Because in these days, it seems like couples are quick to just throw in a towel, right? Mm-hmm. They're just quick to say, this is not working, I don't wanna work, I don't mm-hmm. wanna try this out, I don't wanna have that conversation. Mm-hmm. So what was the toughest thing that you guys had to deal with it and how did y'all get out of it? Uh, definitely blending a family um, was one of the things. Uh, when I came to the marriage, um, I had a daughter and he had a son and who he legally adopted, mm-hmm. uh, daughter Carrington. And just, you know, blending. Blending family is um, is not the easiest thing to do. Um, our kids were so excited because we were their first um, experience of a two-parent home for the, both of our kids. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think the, you know, the adults around circling the situation made it harder. And so just being able to um, to work through that process. And then even right now, you know, one thing I want to um, express is that marriage, as you know, mm-hmm. it is seasons of ups and downs. Mm-hmm. And, you know, mm-hmm. we're empty nesting right now. Mm-hmm. And so we've been, been empty nested, what, two years? Yeah, but the pandemic threw it all. Well, you completely know? threw it. The kids came back, they came back home? They well, came back. <laughs> yeah. And, and, they came back. And it gave kind of like a delayed reaction because the empty nesting has been harder for, for me. Him. Because well, I was, it, you've had a more delayed reaction. Yeah. I definitely yeah. Have, have had, you know, a, a, a reaction to empty nesting. His has been yeah. way more delayed where it has taken me by surprise. And I really think that we are going through the hardest season we've ever gone through in our marriage now. Right now? Why? It's because right now there are there are traumas and experiences in our lives that are coming up in ways that you were not prepared for. Meaning, like for me, um, the adoption issues in my life, the, because remember, I was raised by an older woman, and mm-hmm. it was just me and her. Right. So, and, 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 and as a young boy, and I was adopted when I was four, mm-hmm. when she was 64, and so I didn't get the chance to go to parties and go to events and hang out because she wouldn't take, I mean, at her age, she couldn't, wouldn't, she wouldn't take me places. And so I lived in a neighborhood where, they were all, you know, where everybody was seniors. So I lived a lot by myself. So I was raised by myself. I mean, and so that 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 space of loneliness didn't do well for me. So and I never had family. That's why I called the first group Kirk Franklin and the family, you know. Mm-hmm. And so when I got married to Tim, Tammy comes from a huge family. I'm the oldest of seven. Oh wow. And so so it's a lot of them and then we got married with kids. So we've never lived by ourselves. And so now that we're living by ourselves, for for me and 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 it's pushed me back even deep into therapy is that because now the loneliness and it's it's like the kids been gone their spaces now mm. that are too much for me to handle. Does it bring you back to your it trauma bring, when you? It brings me back to my trauma as my childhood because the empty nest. I've never lived with. So she's an incredible woman. It's not her. It's what the space is doing for me mm. because I have nothing else to nurture. 
I have nothing else to feel that emptiness, and it reminds me of the loneliness that wow. I felt when I was a young. I Tell never me. hear men talking about empty nesting, and this is fascinating to hear because we don't hear this. We don't hear, mm-hmm. and, and I we love hear more that. the oh. woman's side. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and it's and it's more focused on on you know the kids and mm-hmm. and what she's going through. But yeah, there is a side yeah. for the men. Yeah, and and you know, wow. and I don't have cousins. You know, I don't have uncles and aunties. Like like I don't have a family I can go to and spend time with, and I don't have a lot of bros and a couple of friends I do have. Like I have great two guy friends, but they have jobs, mm-hmm. you know, you know, and they're busy. So I spend a lot of time by myself. I write music by myself. I produce by myself. Mm-hmm. So, you know, just that loneliness, my kids feel that. And so I had, I'm having the hard job now of learning that marriage and family are not synonymous. Right. They and, are two different things. And it's funny that you say that. I think that's part of the reason why I always wanted kids, right? My oldest is 21, she goes to NYU. When she left oh, the house, dope. that was my heart. Congratulations. Because she was the one that would, if I go look at a car, she's like, Dad, let's go. Bro. If I go to the baseball game, Dad, let's go. We go, to, like, she was Bro. that one. And then when she, she yes. has her own boyfriend, it kind of hurts. Bro, let me tell you something. I married Tammy, not because of Tammy. I married Tammy because of a daughter. <laughs> <laughs> I fell in because her daughter was five years old when I met her. And she had these big old eyes and this red hair and this raspy voice. And I was like, I fell so deeply in love with this little girl. I was like, Tammy's a bonus. She, she's a bonus. She's a bonus. <laughs> Tammy, yeah. does that make you feel the way ever? No, not necessarily. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, being a single mother, uh, one of the things that was really, really important to me was finding someone that knew we were a, a package deal mm-hmm. and someone that would love her and that mm-hmm. would add to her life and not add, you know, uh, not perfection, but not drama either. Mm-hmm. And so the fact that he loved her so much that he wanted to legally adopt her and wow. give his last I name. I chased her daddy down. Um, Did you really? I chased her daddy down. Yeah. I was like, bro, come on, let's sign these papers. Was he, ag- was he against it at first? It was hard for him, mm-hmm. but for me it was like I was just adamant. And she And he was it. being the father in, ev- in every way, mm-hmm. putting her to bed. She already um, actually had his last name because as the legal guardian, they allowed me to do, I could do that. Right. Um, and so, you know, it was like he's doing it in every way mm-hmm. he should, ha- and, and Carrington wanted it. And she's and like you, she she's one of my best friends. Right. And so even her getting married, y'all, it was like, <laughs> <sighs> okay. First of all, this, he married he married them, mm-hmm. and he's married um, some other couples. Some he's you some know, I wish I had, wish but. he had. Uh, <laughs> um, and so he does an amazing like he does an amazing job with the wedding ceremony, mm-hmm. and he never really prepares. But I knew this one was going to be different, so I kept saying, "Babe, you may want to." Think about this, y'all. The week of, he find, and I had been doing that for maybe two months. The week of, he p- decides to pull out the, the picture box. He's sitting, he said, Bae, I, I wish I would have, I wish I would have done this so much. So, because it was tearing him Apart. up. Mm, of course. And even getting through the ceremony, I mean, it was so special though. So he walked her down the aisle and then he switches and goes, you know, mm-hmm. and into the minister's place. But the, the week after, he was in like a depression. Oh, yeah, yeah, no. My the first time my my you know a couple weeks ago, my daughter went to the game and she didn't take me. She took a boyfriend, and I was hurt. Yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna yeah. lie, I never yeah. told her, but I was hurt because I'm, I'm looking at them at the game. And I'm like, that's my spot. Oh man, you don't understand, man. That daddy daughter thing. Yes. That daddy daughter thing yeah. is a real thing. Yeah, and I, yeah. That's my baby. Bro, and I got two daughters. I got four. Bro, bro. Oh, oh. I got four. See, and my, baby, they are beautiful. Have you seen his family? Yeah. Another yeah. thing oh we gosh. don't talk about enough is is father daughter love. We always hear the complaints about absentee fathers and girls with daddy issues. Mm-hmm. So hearing the flip side of this is is really dope and mm-hmm. beautiful to hear. Yeah, right. oh, yeah. you know what I mean, because we always hear the negative. Yeah. And yeah. The, the the effects not having a dad there, but fathers that are listening, it is so important. Like we need y'all the most. Man, yeah. absolutely. We need that it's love from beautiful. our fathers. Everything because yeah. they learn it from me. If they they're gonna learn it from me, or learn it from the street. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I was gonna ask you. With him going through the stuff that he was going through, how did that make you feel, right? Because if you flip sides and let's say, you know, my wife was was dealing with the fact that she feels lonely, it would probably make me feel away. Like, but I'm in the house, but I'm yeah. here. Yeah. Like absolutely. you can talk to me. Like we can go out. We can do things. Like, uh, yes. like I'm not here. You yes, know? absolutely. No, it it has triggered definitely things in me. It has um I mean it's been off putting at times. Mm-hmm. Um it makes you know, makes you second guess yourself. I'm like, wait. Am I not your family? Because I know how I, how I regard him, mm-hmm. and it's not it's not that he's saying that I'm not his family. We have what I've had to reconcile is we have different traumas, and so you know we have we believe in therapy. We the poster <laughs> the poster children of therapy, and so we have gone mostly collectively 
and a little bit individually, but now I definitely have started going myself mm -hmm. uh, just to um, understand the complexities of what he's going through, but also to, you know, I'm older now. I'm trying to figure out, well, what would I like to do? And mm -hmm. so um, in answer to your question, it, it, it was a jolt at first, but now I'm understanding as I'm walking on my own path, the complexities of what his trauma really does bring to the relationship and what all of our traumas do. We're always yeah, in yeah. this process. You grow up, you mature, but then that little kid is still always in some ways with you. Mm -hmm. Always like. And that little kid probably feels like, am I not enough? And then that's from things that you came up with, right? Yes. Like, uh, why, I'm here. Yeah. But then it's not really yeah. anything he's doing to you. It's his trauma. And trying to remember that yeah. in the moment. Like I know that he loves me. I know that I know he loves me, but you know, and Kirk's always been a loner. He's like I've mm -hmm. I've I've adapted to and being okay with understanding who he is. And mm -hmm. so I've been totally fine. Like if he lands and I say, Hey, you need a minute to just kind of woosa, I'm okay, you know, if you want to take a couple of minutes and you know, a couple of hours even and just go chill, decompress mm -hmm. before you come home. I was like that when we had kids. I'm like, I I, I get it. Um, but now I find that he needs even more space. And so it's it's in answer to your question, at times it's hard not to internalize that. Like right. he's needing space from me. And how was the industry for you, right? We always talk about Kirk and how it was for him and him traveling and the tours and the, the, the gold and platinum records and you know him living out his dreams. But how was it from for you where in most cases, Great question. you have to be mom and dad, right? Mm -hmm. You're taking the kids to the yeah. games. You're taking the At kids times, to the PTAs. I, I definitely felt like a married single woman. So how, sure. how was that for you? You know, the complexity of the industry that we're in, like we're in entertainment, but mm -hmm. we also do gospel music slash ministry. So it has a different complexity to it. So my mindset is, okay, this is calling. So when you view something like, a calling then it 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 helps but it doesn't take away from the hard and there are times there were times when it was absolutely hard to be married and feel like you know that that you're a single mom uh, I learned to definitely not even um, bring things up to the kids until they were set in stone I'm sure your wife <laughs> does mm -hmm. the same because it can day. change it it can change at a hat and although you understand that, that's hard, it's disappointing. And to be able to be real about that and say, I'm, I'm disappointed in this, but also understand and have to be the one to understand all the time. They get old sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, as well. But when you, I, we are committed to each other. I'm committed to him. I knew going in, I counted the cost. In, in the industry, there, there's cost. Absolutely. And that's her mom and daddy. What 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 you see from Tammy mm -hmm. and how she's wired? Her mom and daddy are like jewels. They just 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 the soberness and 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 just the depth of these two people. Because what is Pop seventy five now? Seventy three. Seventy. Ooh, don't give me a line. Seventy four, I think. Seventy three, seventy four. Yeah. Mom, seventy seventy one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you know, you know, they they're just really deep. You know, kind of compassionate, really thought provoking people. Right. And so that's why she's so soberly minded. Like, then you know, and again, it 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 has been this difficult dichotomy because when you are a gospel artist, but then you live in these spaces that are kind of counterintuitive mm -hmm. to what that is. You know, it can even be hard not only for her, but you know, hell, it's hard for me. You, you know, to, to to try to sometimes try to understand because you live in a space where you're always criticized with who you work with, who Correct. you're collaborating with, or you know what you got on, how you move on stage. And so it's like my whole career, there was always this this tension. And so sometimes you don't know how to turn that off when you go home. I think that probably just like you is that, you know, when you live in your creative space and then you have to go home and try to switch. Like I say to people all the time, like you remember when Mike Tyson was really like, like when he was at the top of his game as yep. a boxer and he mm -hmm. was just like knocking cats out. Can you imagine him getting on a plane, going to a PTA meeting? No. No. You see what I'm trying to say? Yeah. And you know, so it's 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 almost like we we love these spaces of people, but we forget that that the transitions for them and, and, and other spaces is very difficult. It can be hard and you know and chaotic for them to live mm -hmm. in these normal yeah. spaces. Well, how, are you guys as, how are you guys as parents, right? Because 
the, the cool thing with with sometimes being on the road a lot is you're the superhero, right? Because mm -hmm. the kids, especially the girls, are tired of mom. Ooh. So when dad comes home, you are, they're running, they're jumping on you, they're kissing you, they're mm -hmm. rubbing your feet, massaging you, cooking you food, drawing you something special, right? The boys are sometimes the same, sometimes different, but how are you with, with disagreements and arguments? Are you in the middle like, you know, last time you came, we were talking about your son and, and the phone call, your son that he, he recorded. How are you with that? Do you get in between? Do you try to squash that beef? Or with mom, because a lot of times the girls will beef with mom crazy, but won't beef with dad. So how are you with that as being a parent? Do you try to squash it? Do you be like, that's their thing? Mm -hmm. um, I think that I definitely respect. Uh, they're, they're, I, I'm not a, a man, although I bring a lot to our, to our sons. Mm -hmm. I'm not a man. And so there were things definitely, even though as a mom, and mom, we can get in the way, especially when it comes to, to our boys. Mm -hmm. And we don't want them, we don't want y'all mm -hmm. to discipline them hard. Uh, and so there were times where I had to definitely learn, okay, he, he's he got that. This is important for him to have. Um, and he understands that there there is a, um, a process, a way of thinking. I've been a, a little girl before. Um, but also, too, I think that there are ways that in which he has been very helpful and with the girls at times, and I may help him say, hey, you know, Kirk is is very methodical in his thinking, and so oftentimes coming alongside, especially our youngest daughter, it was always a teaching moment, and I could tell that wasn't working for her mm. at all. And so I said, hey, you need to just be around her and just be a part of her life, and that builds more relationship, but otherwise she's going to shut down on you. And because for a second, and they are so much alike, for a second they were like, uh and he said to me, he said, babe, thank you for giving me that advice because it's helped me so much. It's helped me really break down this wall that I saw that I was, you know, building. So I think we come alongside and have like And the fact that he can accept that because that's difficult. You know, yeah. my wife has told me that before, like, you got to be, you got to be on him. And I'm like, what you, I'm a good dad. What you mean? She was like, no, I'm yeah. not saying you're not a good dad, yeah. but I see things that you don't see. Yeah. And you have to be able and to accept that. And that's the helper that. side of us, you mm -hmm. know, help, allowing us to, to help. It, it's beneficial. It seems like both of you are really very self-aware, and I would imagine that's mm -hmm. probably why you've been able to go 27 years. And I, I, I like to ask, um, you know, now, yeah, because you're both admitting to things mm -hmm. that your shortcomings, and a lot of people don't. A lot of people just see what the other person. I thank doing you for highlighting that because I, I don't Seriously? think I thought about it that way. No, I'm, I'm listening to you. Like you're, you're very mature how you talk about your issues. A lot of people are quick to say, "Well, you do this to me, or you do this, or you." They blame the other person mm -hmm. instead of saying, "Well, I have these traumas." But you know what, we, we. We've been married 27 years, mm -hmm. so we've grown to this. And I want people to understand we've, we've grown to this. Mm -hmm. This wasn't necess ne uh, necessarily how we responded, you know, uh, like five well, years in, mm -hmm. especially him. That's why I want to ask you, like, he <laughs> with 27 <laughs> years and the self-awareness and how you've grown to this now, what advice would you give to people? Because like you said earlier, people are so quick to throw in the towel. Like, it seems like one little bit of adversity, it's like, I can't do this. It's too much. And I, I see a lot of people not Real really quick. fighting for love. And Real I'm quick. a hopeless romantic where I think getting through those things makes you a lot stronger. And it then does. you can kind of look back like, wow, we went through all this and here we are. Yeah. Do you mind if I answer that first? Please. I really believe that we as a culture would also fix this problem by not forcing marriage on everyone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's like even when you see a woman, like think about how many times a woman may go back to her family reunion, whatever. If she's 29, 30, 31 years old and not married with kids, all the older ladies jump on her like that's that, you know, mm -hmm. like, like, like girl, why are you not married? Like she's a cripple. Like something's yeah. wrong. Yeah, with yeah her. something's wrong. Mm -hmm. And so all of these type of constructs force people sometimes into decisions that they're not ready for. Like like for example, me. You know, I got married, but now that I'm much older and I'm talking to them, I was not emotionally, psychologically ready to be married, but 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 I was in church, and the mm -hmm. the narrative in church is if you living in sin, mm -hmm. you are gonna go to hell. Right. And so you scared because you're a young boy, you know, you know, you know, you you acted with them girls, you know. My career was taken off. It had a platinum album, even though I was in church and there was this struggle. And so you get married, not because you understand the cost of it. But because you are you are driven by the fear of the community that you're in, mm -hmm. and we all know any decision made by fear is not sustainable. All right. No decision made when you're afraid mm -hmm. is a sustainable decision. And so I think that one of the things that we can do is that we can first of all let's pop the bubble 
that is romanticized. Mm -hmm. It's like, that's beautiful, that's pretty, but that's got the filter because everything on Instagram is the filter. Mm -hmm. So it's like, we keep living for the filter, but we gotta be able to show the freckles. We gotta be able to show, you know, the, 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 the no make. We, we've gotta be able to paint to our young men and women as they try to maneuver through these things called love relationships, the real pictures of what life will bring so that they can make sober decisions. Excellent point because people are just picking anyone because family pressure, yes. uh, not wanting to live in sin, especially with women. Mm -hmm. I feel like with women, you're thrown away if you're not married by a certain time. Like something's wrong with you. Well, I mean, talking about women, so much of who we are has been romanticized from the very beginning, mm -hmm. from the toys that we play with, you know, the Barbie mm -hmm. dream house, and she's what we're gonna get Ken, and you know, have find Prince Charming. And then, you know, the toys are not necessarily for girls anyway. They're not necessarily, the messaging is not confidence and strong. It is being rescued. So even when a woman mm. becomes accomplished, mm -hmm. such as herself, has her own home, like, you know, the Bachelorette on the show, all these things, but the, end all goal is marriage it's not enough until it's marriage. Marry so you. it's like but, but you're not married yeah where mm -hmm. are your kids yeah. and that messaging has like yeah. has, has got to stop it is so yeah. unhealthy and it makes people jump into it's like i got to get married something's wrong with me something's yeah. wrong with me and they are so much more focused on the wedding which takes mm -hmm. all of 20 to 30 minutes mm -hmm. And it's beautiful. And I tell people all that money. money. Mm -hmm. I say, you know what? Tell you at least half of that. Go get a house. Mm -hmm. Go, please go do that. But it takes twenty to thirty minutes. But the life begins, and then you're coming together with all this trauma and chaos, and you really probably ain't emotionally ready anyway. Right. It is. It is. <laughs> that is a recipe for disaster. And our community, our culture, American culture we're doing it to each other. Mm -hmm. That's that's the yeah. thing is that we talk about the problem, but but not always recognizing that we're part of the problem as well, is that we romanticize and 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 we paint these big bars of what people should be and these accomplishments. And so until we begin to deconstruct that mm -hmm. and to be able to create real realities and real communities of truth around people, mm -hmm. but because you know how some people even brag and say, um, my mom and dad have been married 35, 40, 50 years. And I remember couples like that too. But guess what? They weren't talking. Mm -mm. When he are you was, sleeping in the same when room? When sleeping in the same room? My happened. grandparents like, did not sleep in the, in the same room. And I grew up, I was like, it wasn't until my 20s, but I was like, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. That was that was unhealthy. And those people will look down on someone who's single and happy in a yes. place. Yes. But, yeah. but you're not married. But right. they can say, I yeah. have 35 years with this person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah. It's, it's what you said when you said, uh, you know, we set a lot of girls up, our kids up, for the rescue me situation. Yes. And the problem with that is that goes back to the conversation we had last week where people are looking to be rescued and not looking for value, right? Mm -hmm. And that goes to the conversation when it, where uh, it was a big thing last week about would you date a bus driver? And people yeah, are like, yeah, I wouldn't yeah. date a bus driver. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I was trying to say, it, like, you know, I teach my daughter, date and marry who makes you feel good, yeah. makes you happy. Yes. Everything else comes and goes. You, you somebody could be rich to, today and then tomorrow be dead broke. Mm -hmm. I said, but the end of the day, that happiness is there for lifetime. Yeah. I thank God right. I met my wife when I was sixteen because it, it doesn't matter. She wasn't there for money. I didn't have no money. She didn't have no mm -hmm. money. We were just kids that fell in love. Wow. And it just goes from there. Now I love y'all. Like anything else, we've we've had money. We didn't have money. We've had money again. We've had jobs. We didn't have jobs. We have kids. We had uh, miscarriages, but it didn't matter. We were together. Yeah. I know tomorrow if I if I lose everything, she's there because she's not there for that. Mm -hmm. and that's what I try to tell people. Look for somebody that's going to treat you out. It doesn't matter if they're Thanks. a janitor, Thanks. if they're a bus driver, Thanks. if they're a, a train conductor. It, it doesn't matter because I think people are looking for that rescue, and that's yeah. the wrong thing to look One for. One of the best things my mom did for me is pull me to the side. And she was like, you know, because, of course, his career had, had already started. Although we met much younger, um, his career had already began once we decided we were each other's person. Mm -hmm. That's the new saying, each other's person. person. <laughs> and she said, do you love him? Mm. Could you be in an apartment with him with nothing? Because all everything could go away. I want to make sure you love him. And I love the fact that she stripped everything back. I had already done it for myself, but that was such a gift to me that my mom gave to me that, hey, to me, you're adding to him. Because everybody was like, Ooh, you know, mm -hmm. especially within our, our community. And she goes, I want you to understand that you're adding to him. Mm -hmm. And I want to make sure, do you love him? If all this goes away, are you okay? And I, and I was like, yeah, I've already decided that. Let me ask you a question, though. We had this conversation yesterday, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. 
Sorry, I gotta put. I'm just gonna say this. I'm not saying this is your situation. This is beautiful. <laughs> You married to Kirk Franklin. Okay. Oh, here we go. Um, you're gonna really ask him this? Yes, because this is a conversation we had on air. You good? I need y'all to keep and it. And ninety percent of the people said they would be out. Okay. Oh, great Jesus. guy. Great guy. Treats you well. Everything is amazing. Great father. Great. Has money. Has money. Not oh. driving. Six vessel treats you amazingly. Uh -oh. <laughs> but he has ED. Can't get it up. Y'all can't have sex. Not just once in a while. All the time. Oh, I'm gonna answer that. Is I'm gonna commit suicide. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Oh, oh, okay. Hold on. I'm out of here. Come on, Jesus. Let me ask this question. I'm going to the upper room. Let me ask this question. Yes, so we are in the process of dating or we're already married? Uh, most of these people are already married. You ain't gonna worry about that, girl. I'm gonna be gone. I'm gonna, you gonna I'm kill gone. yourself? <laughs> but I can't live with to myself. Me, to me personally, that's different. Why? Because if, it's if, not it's not his fault. It's not like you could be like, you know. Well, let, let, let me let me explain you can't, why why because it's, it could be stress, it could be yes. Yeah, so but let so me explain why why different. If we're already married, to me, we're now entering a better for worse. And so, and that means we've we've had hopefully really good sex, and and if sex is all that was to our marriage, then it's probably doomed because now we can't have it. But if that's not all who we were, and we come to that place, will it be hard? Well, yeah, of course. It's, you know, I love him. I, I love being with my husband. But leading up to that point. But, but, but you do know that I've been able to do, do that other thing. <laughs> oh, my God. You know what? You be, you be coming on here and getting in trouble. Get back. <laughs> yeah. Look how he's looking at her. Look at how he's looking at her. He said, I still, still could do that other what thing, though. Want? Yes, like there, are other thing. <laughs> there are other things that we can do. Correct. Yes. So that wouldn't be a deal breaker. No, I don't. I, I would. Boy, leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yes. <laughs> she remember the other day. She's blushing over here. All right. So, so, you, you, have, so you would oh be. Gosh. You would just be like, okay, we're we're. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna ride this thing out. Not really. Well, not but ride it I'm out. I'm not gonna ride it you out. I'm actually mean. going to pretend to ride it out in my Correct. mind. Um. Yeah. I am saying. It's kind of hard to answer this with your man right there. No, it? it's not for me. Okay, I am good. saying that uh, this, uh, if we are already ma married. Now, if, I, if we're dating, I'm getting to know you, and you say we're not going to be able to have sex, that's different. What about mm -hmm. freshly engaged? You said yes, you haven't tested the goods yet, and then he tells you. I, I will have to ponder, yeah. yeah. I, would I, would to ponder. Have to, I would have to ponder that. Yeah, I would have to ponder. That yeah, would be tough, because mm -hmm. you're now telling me we're not going to ever, yeah. ever. It would be simulated. Stop no it! Way. Stop <laughs> it! But if we're married, about the worst. to me, we're, yeah, it, it is. It is now. We're for better, for worse, and and would would it be absolutely hard? Absolutely, actually not. But, <laughs> See, but, uh, but, but you, now you're gonna give me a trouble. Here. Pause. Um, but yeah, I would. It's it. Okay. I like to flip the question on the men though, because we did talk about you know from the women's perspective. Correct. Yes. And, and how valuable Why is you sex? Why right. <laughs> Mr. Kirk Franklin, please Where come back. Going? Please come back to your chair. I got He's like, no, I gotta, no, he gotta no. go to the bathroom. No, 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 no. <laughs> okay, say the perfect woman. You love her. Everything about her. Everything's beautiful. Treats you what? Mm -hmm. Treats you amazing. Can cook. Everything. But when you go in there, you feel nothing. It's the desert. It's oh, the desert. Because well, well, I feel like a lot of women that, but you can do good. things for the desert. I feel like a lot of women would ride it out for men, but will our men do the same? No, nah, girl. They so selfish. Mm -mm. Let me talk. Go ahead. Don't come up on here lying now. Come on now. Keep it a buck. You know, there's a Bible script. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We gonna bring God into it. We can't you know, that. Right? right? When that happens, it's like, oh, well. <laughs> God to justify it. Come on. Come on, Kirk. Please. I already answered. Just, you know, what? You, would you, could you stay? You can add stuff to that. And you've had the great desert sex before can be, that. Can, can be helped. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, we, 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 we have to figure it out. I, but how? We have to figure it out. We have to. Oh, get you know what? <laughs> I like to point out how quickly Stop Tammy it. said she'd rock out. And fellas, I have not heard the same from yes, you. Yes, yes. Yeah, of course he would ride. I just joking. He would ride yeah. out. And what about you, Envy? I would definitely ride out. Absolutely. Your wife's listening. Hey, Julia. Yes, it doesn't matter. There's, there's, there's other things that she yeah. can do. It's not just yeah. if, if that's a desert. There's other things. Yeah. So you're, you're but rocking see, to out. To me, it's not. To me, it's not quite the same because there is something you that can, can fix. Do. Correct. Yeah, there are it's things easier. you can do for man. You can't for, fix that for the desert. Correct. And a yeah. lot of times when we're not responding like that, it's usually the man's fault. 
It's always our fault. Currently. It's so never. But I don't have that problem. Good. I and I want to. I want to get back. Are you gonna say something? Y'all not gonna. No, you know no, what? No, no. Go. Didn't wanna, we? Didn't y'all come in and talk about your show? Yeah, no, no. <laughs> we all in your business. No, no. This is great. This is great. I want to talk about music too. So, how is it working with each other in the studio? Because married couples sometimes it's it's difficult because you see each other all the time. So, how is working with him in the studio? How is working with her in the studio? With regards to music, music. Mm-hmm. I don't work with them in this. In oh, oh so y'all, y'all don't work with each other at all. Not in, not musically. No, no, uh, uh-uh. uh. You don't no. want that stress. He may run something past me. Uh, what do I think about that? Um, you guys can thank me for the uh oh because he went back to the drawing board because of <laughs> okay. what he had at first. But I other thought, than that, you're not mm-hmm. going in there. No, oh, uh-uh. no, no. No, I'll come visit. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, but music is his thing. Okay. Yeah, I I love music though, which mm-hmm. we ha- we have that in common, mm-hmm. and so that helps. You know, I would say our relationship. Um, and I understand the studio and the process and all of that. And so you that's been, would you say, not beneficial, Mr. Franklin? Yes, baby. Yeah. Baby. What's the best thing about each other? Can you guys tell us, like, the best thing about each oh, other? Oh, man, she's my superhero. She, she's, she, Tam is the bar. You know, as I say all the time, and I, and, and I know we got cameras watching, so, you know, th- this is this is something that I'll, I'll stand behind. If Tam and I, God forbid, don't ever make it, mm-hmm. and I mean this on God, mm-hmm. Tammy gets everything. Y'all heard it. It's been recorded 100%. several times. 100%. Yes. You have witnesses now? Yes. Oh, yeah. Lots of witnesses. We got you. 100%. She'll get everything. It's because everything that I have has been because of her, her support, her commitment. When I look at these kids and the incredible just just gems that they've become, leave everything, I'll go sleep in a cardboard box somewhere. And I mean that. Now, 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 that ain't just TV talk. If something happened and me and my wife didn't make it, Everything. I don't care. I could care less. Tammy, am my hero. So, please write a book. <laughs> Teach us. Mm-hmm. Teach the rest of us. But, that, but that's how it should be. Yeah, that's beautiful. You, if you're married with somebody, she, she she has your children. She takes care of the house and all that. You want your kids to have the best. Mm-hmm. And nine times out of ten, your kids are not going to be happy if mom is not happy. Right. Yeah. So, it's but there's a lot truth. of men that don't think that way. Yeah. And, and they I don't, don't, don't understand that. that. I don't way. understand and that. But e- for me, you know, no man, it's like everything. Take it. It's yours. You know, and and. And you know it. It's because you understand, you know, just, 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 and especially when you've never had family, mm. and now that you have these kids, and because of what Tammy has done to contribute to my career and to my life and to these kids, you know, it's like, look, you know, I was not able to. Because it would have been his fault. <laughs> I was not able to, you know, you know what, I'm, 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 you know, just whatever the case may be, mm-hmm. everything would go to Tammy, and. And I mean that. I hate that it's easy now, like when you're in a good place, but then people sometimes change. change when they're yeah. mad at you or resentful. Yeah. Yeah, but you know, but that's I why also, we have it on tape right now. So we, <laughs> right. Well, and I also <laughs> live based on the way that my life has been constructed. Mm-hmm. You know, because remember, my, you know, like, like, and I don't want to go into details even right now, but I'm dealing with a new family drama. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm talking about that is very, very painful for me, and you know, you know, and she heard me breaking down another day on the phone, man, you know, like right before we came to New York, yeah. I mean, you know, and it's just, you know, like my, 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 my past family and these family things, like they've never gone away. Like it's always something that come up. Mm-hmm. And so it's like, I'm never living where the wounds get hit, whether it's stuff with my son mm-hmm. or stuff with other family members. And now I've got some new stuff that is even probably the most painful I've ever dealt with. I got a voice message from somebody I haven't heard from that I let Tammy hear just yesterday. I haven't heard from in almost 25 years. And it's like I can feel the anxiety and yeah, the trauma yeah. even when I heard their voice message. It's like, you know, yeah. And how, how do you deal with that, though? Because, you know, it's well, people I don't, come to you. They, they come to you for love and help, right? Because they, 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 a lot of people feel like, you know, he's a man of the cloth. He, he, he's and I hate gospel. all that. I hate and all they, that. And they come to you for that. all that. You know, yeah. so who do you go to besides your wife? Like, who can you lean on when you're having those problems? And yeah. You're having family problems, and especially in this world, there might be somebody you can't trust because yeah, you feel yeah. if I tell him, it's yeah, going yeah, yeah, yeah. to leak to the public. So facts, who, facts, who do facts, you facts, trust, facts. you know? Facts. Well, first of all, you know, because I don't have family is I don't have a lot, you know, but I, uh, my therapist that I've been going to since I was 28, it's funny because I was talking to him a while back. I told him I was talking to him just about, about a month or so ago. And we were laughing. I said because I'm his longest running patient, mm-hmm. and I was laughing. And I, and I, I was like, "What's wrong with me? Why am I? <laughs> why? Why am I the longest patient that you've ever seen?" And he and and, and, uh, and he's Nigerian, really, really nice guy. He said, "He said, 
Uh, he said, because with every level of your life, it's triggering new traumas. Mm. So we're having to address things that if you would have just plateaued, you know, if you would have just had, you know, one, you know, just maybe, you know, season of just maybe being a school teacher and, and you retired or something. He said, but because you're having these new levels and new experiences, which, which God has been very kind to give me, but it's triggering, mm -hmm. you know, whether it's empty nesting or this or that or, you know, my, my thing with my son or different that, you know, so it has been just lessons after lessons. And my, my natural response is to be alone. Mm -hmm. That's my next mm -hmm. so and so and then that hurts her right. and I'm trying to figure that out right. and then you run to work and you overwork as men because right. you know and then because now my kids are gone and I don't have something to nurture because as men we have to nurture so you know it's been it's been a hard hard season for you and how's the relationship with your son now is that better did y'all patch it up or still not having that conversation yet no it's 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 not better and you know we just you know y'all just keep praying for us that's too bad. I, yeah. I, I want to ask Sammy because I got to ask you what's your favorite thing about your mm. husband? The huh. best thing about him? I think his ability to make me smile like at any given moment. I can be mad at him and he just will come in and just, which, you know, the day I met him, that, you know, he made me smile. He made me laugh. Towel gate. Towel, towel gate. gate. Towel <laughs> gate. You like that? I got you love it. You can keep that. You can keep oh, that. Oh. Shirt button up. Jeez. Look, shirt gate. <laughs> shirt gate. Shirt gate on Breakfast Club. Kirk dripping. Time's hard. Yeah. Him. <laughs> but he makes he makes me smile. He makes me happy. That's so important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he's my friend. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're really really good friends. I think that's been um, part of you know people. A lot of people ask, what's the secret? What's the sauce? And we don't have, you know, this magic wand. Um, but I would say friendship, but I'm sure mm -hmm. you can uh, relate to that. Friendship with your spouse is, it is so important. And it, it, it was important to me. He didn't quite get it at first when we were first, you know, dating. He thought I was putting him in the friend, meant friend zone. And I'm like, no, I'm not putting you in the friend zone. It's just so important. And now 27 years later, we see why. Gotcha. And that yeah. balance of being good friends and still not losing the passion for someone. Yeah. I think that is definitely tricky. Yeah. And to be able to have that is. No, I really like him. Like he does it for me. You should see how he's been looking at yeah. you. I've been peeping it the whole time. <laughs> he is like looking like, mm, when we get out of here, girl. Well, we got it. we're going from different cities, but when, <laughs> when we get back home. <laughs> now Saturday Night Live, you were on Saturday Night Live with the uh, Jonas Brothers. Yeah, man. How was that? How how did that collab happen? You know, man. I just get called. It's, it's just the most amazing thing. I just get calls. I got a a, a song coming out, but it's it's I got a call from a rapper that you would not believe that I'm gonna jump on their record, female rapper that is like, you'd be like, yo, Kirk and so, yeah, you know, it's it's like, I'm just humbled that I just get these calls. Yeah. Man. I just get calls and, you know, I'm really grateful, you know, I'm, you know, and I love music, still do music. I've got a new song out now mm -hmm. called All Things. We're about to play it now. And, oh man, thank you, man. Can you give us a hint who the rapper is? Cause I'm nosy. It's a female it's a rapper. female. I know. Female, and then, you know, you would never think. Which one? Of, don't say it. the record come out. Yeah, I let don't, the record don't say it, don't say it. We want yeah, the man. exclusive here at the Breakfast Club. You I know what? Because if it's if it's a rapper that I think it is, if he says it, she gonna go left. So okay. let's hear it. Let's hear it. I want to hear it. Yeah. Also, uh, you know, I want to ask you. I want to go back to something you said before you get out of here. You said uh, when I was like, you know, people call you because you're a man of the cloth, and and you said you hate that. I hate that. What what makes you hate that? I hate it because uh, once again, see, people want you to do the all the work of getting to God, and just give them the cliff notes. Like when I see people in the airport and say, yo, Kirk, man, pray for me, pray for me. I'll always stop and say, you know, brother, I will, but I do want you to know he hears your prayer just as quick as he hears mine. Mm. People think you've got this VIP mm -hmm. lock on God just because you do his music. Bro, that, bro, I may be worse off than you. Mm. And I just think that these images of faith and marriage and, and, and all of these ideals that we construct in our minds, that we are not going to be better people and closer to the dreams we want until we realize and see that everybody is in the same boat with us. You know, like I hate this elitist approach that even Christians have when they talk to people. It's like, you need Jesus. You need to come to him. Let me help you. It's like instead of this where I'm a patient, I'm, I'm a doctor, talk to patient, I like to talk to people like I'm a patient in the same bed next yes. to you, mm. and yes. I need to tell you about the doctor. 
I would feel like that would be a really a unrealistic um, pressure to be perfect, and I th- I think that turns a lot of people off. Yeah. Because a lot of us aren't. So I appreciate when someone can have it's the complexity, right? Duality of yeah, yeah I am close to God, but so are you. So and are I you. And I also have flaws like you do too. Yes. And and I'm just you know I'm just more vocal about mine. Yes. Yeah. yes. I, I think that's what turns people on to yeah. when people. Mm-hmm. I, I love people that are cool with their flaws. Man. Yeah. yeah and don't try to hide them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like we're all. Patience. We're all growing. Yeah. And you're right. Oftentimes, you know, people of faith can make people feel like they're the ones that need the help. Right. And it's like, yeah. no, I'm still growing and learning too. Man. But sometimes those ones that speak the most righteous, they be the most ratchet and be off the chain and yeah. I'm judging you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you know, yeah. and my job is I just want everybody to know, man, that that, that, that that love at the foot of that cross, man, there's room for everybody. Black, white, straight, gay, young, old. There's room there for everybody. And we all need to be down there together yes. talking about amazing grace, right? right? You know what I'm saying? So, My last question, I know you guys got to go. Well, I just want to remind people the one premieres May 18th at 9 p.m. on TV One. Uh, when you see sometimes you see a lot of bishops and pastors and preachers, right? And, and you see a lot of the stuff that they're going through where they don't feel like they're doing the right thing for their congregation. Uh, how do you feel that affects what you do and, and affects the church, right? Mm. Especially the one that, you know, in New York right now that's going through his, 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 his problems. It just feels, I think it, it, it takes away from what the church is trying to do. And I think it takes away from some of the good preachers and pastors yeah, and, yeah, and bishops. Yeah. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, yeah. Is I think, first of all, you know, just much love to the uh, pastors and churches that are doing good things. You know what I'm saying? Eric Mason, Charlie Dates, you know. Uh, Tony Evans, Kenneth Omer, you know what I'm saying? You know, you know, people like Emmanuel Lambert and, you know, Trip Lee and Lecrae and, you know, you know, um, 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 Tim, 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 Tim Ross, Tim Ross, you know, you know, you know, just, you know, pastor, but yeah, 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 yeah. But you know, yes, yes. Yeah, so, you know, there's, there's, there's some ones that are really killing it. And, uh, oh, and that uh, Darius Daniels. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so, but, but I think that the light needs to be shining on them. And I do believe that in loving ways, we do have to address the clowns. We got to address the goofies because I think that the goofies and the clowns, you write, they make the job more difficult. You know what I mean? And I'm not talking about perfection. See, see, you know, you know, it's, see, 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 sometimes we talk about that you can't judge. You judge what you put on this morning. Mm-hmm. You judge if you're going to wear the head or not. We all judge. It's the healthy, and what is the purpose of the judgment? The purpose of the judgment is to make something better. Mm-hmm. Now, if the ju- purpose of the judgment is to just kill mm-hmm. and just to destroy and to make yourself look better, then no, then the motives and the tent are wrong. But we've got to shine light because I am a sinner saved by grace. I, I can go out there right now and mess up and fail. That's why I like to lead with my weaknesses. I'm not perfect. I struggle with the same temptations as any other man, same failures, same flaws, same same heartbreaks, but when we take money and material things, and when we abuse people's weaknesses, and when we use people's weaknesses for our own financial and celebrity benefits, let me tell you something, man, we gotta shed light on the goofies. I agree, I think that's, such, that's mm-hmm. such a sin to take advantage of people who have a lot of faith, and they, they're they believing in you, yeah. and you you know you're taking mm-hmm. advantage, and you know yeah. you're full of it. Yeah, man, you know? yeah, man, yeah. we've gotta do it. Once again, not because we're perfect, but when we are abusing the weaknesses of people and taking God and making him a lottery, when we make church uh, Vegas, yeah, we got a problem. Yeah. Facts. All right. Well, we appreciate you for joining us. No, man, us. thank y'all for having but, us, man. I, I mean, I'm, I'm going to be like the, 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 the guy in the airport. We need you to leave with a prayer. We need, we need <laughs> oh, no, you to man, leave I'm with a prayer. So. Man, first of all, man, man, Father, thank you for just this opportunity, man. You know, um, we don't understand why you always allow things to get so crazy in our lives. We know the world bananas right now but pops i gotta trust you Mm. is i gotta trust that you know what you're doing with all of the hurt that people are going through i'm just asking you please 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 pop some kind of way man i need for you to just shed some light on some dark areas in your children's lives right now so many people want to know where you are and so i'm putting my confidence in you that you're going to show them that if they just get still and get quiet they can hear your voice because I know that you still got us. I know you still love us. And I believe by faith that you're still there. Even when I don't always feel you, I have to remember that I know you. And I, and I believe that for all of your kids listening right now. Love you in your name, Jesus.
Amen. All right. Amen. Well, there you have Amen. it. Amen. Amen. Well, there you have it. It's Kirk and Tammy Franklin. Thank you so much. Thank you. And don't forget nice to, to check out the show person. May 18th, 9 p.m. on TV One. And the new single that we're going to play right now, All Things. Appreciate you, brother. Appreciate, appreciate you, sister. you, Kay. Thank, Thank you so much. Nice Thank you. Meet you in person, it's The Breakfast Club. Way. Good morning. Wake that ass up. Early in the morning. The Breakfast Club.